Today I'll take you through how to get your GCC for Minds and Works post your apprenticeship. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are visiting for the first time, my name is Zanelle. For those of you that are coming back, welcome back. So let me get straight to it. You guys know that we spent a lot of um, time, there's a lot of content in the playlist. If you haven't seen it, check it out on the GCC for electrical and mechanical engineers. So if you're looking to get your GCC and you're wondering what are the requirements, what qualification do you need to have, the number of years of experience that you're needing to have, where to apply, what to study and what to focus on, go check out the playlist. I've put all of that information in there. What we haven't delved into into a lot of detail is the GCC for Minds and Works. As much as there are synergies and similarities, there are distinct differences between GCC for Factories and GCC for Minds and Works. Today I'll take you guys through what the requirements are just after you finish your apprenticeship and when you get your trade. As you know, I've shared how you don't have to have an engineering degree to become a certified engineer, whether in the factory or plant or in the mines. However, there are requirements that you're needing to finish off. You do have to have a certain number of experience and there are certain trades or trade certifications that will differ between one and the other. As you guys know, GCC is Government Certificate of Competency and it is for electrical and mechanical engineers. So when you get your certification for Mines and Works, you'll become a Government Certified Electrical Engineer or Government Certified Mechanical Engineer for Mines and Works. For the Government Certificate of Competency for Mines and Work, the affiliation is not only with the Department of Labor, but also with the Department of Mineral Resources. So the application process is somewhat similar, but there are differences in that you do need to have exposure and experience in the mines. So high level, the minimum number of years of experience after you get your trade certification ranges between two to four years. So let's start with the longest. If you're an instrument mechanic or a welder, you're needing at least four years experience post you get your trade. However, two of those years must be in a mine as an electrician or as a fitter. If you're a refrigeration mechanic, a boiler maker, or a blacksmith, you're needing a minimum of three years experience post your qualification or after you get your trade certificate. However, two of those years must be in a mine as an electrician or as a fitter. One of the other trades that requires three years experience is a fitter and armorer. So you're needing a minimum of three years experience post your qualification as a fitter and armorer, but two of those years must be in a mine and must be either an electrician or a fitter within a mining environment. The rest of the trades require a minimum of two years experience, but what's important is these two years must be spent in a mine. So if you're an aero engine fitter or a ground engineer, if you're a diesel mechanic, a motor mechanic, an electrician, you're also needing a minimum of two years experience. So if you're a fitter, a fitter and turner, a fitter and rigger, you're needing at least two years experience. If you're a millwright, a lift mechanic, a tool die maker, you're also needing at least two years experience. And if you're an instrument technician, you're needing two years experience as an instrument technician. So just in summary, you're needing a minimum of two to four years experience after you get your trade qualification. What's critical though, is that you have the majority of your experience and exposure working in a mining environment. So you're needing a minimum of two years having been exposed and having worked in a mine. And that's where the requirement is for you to get your exposure, to gain your experience. So you understand fully the safety requirements, the operational requirements, and some of the technical requirements and how to maintain pieces of equipment, especially regarding safety in mines, not only of the equipment, but also of people as well. In the next video, I'll share some more detail around the application process, especially for Minds and Works. And I'll continue to share some of the content and insights on what syllabi you're needing to follow, what you need to make sure you cover so that you can be successful in your exams. Comment below what some of the challenges have been for you if you've tried to apply for your GCC. Remember to live your best life, learn as you grow, and leave for change. Shout!